the soul, just let it come naturally. At this point, I'm just ripping off Jen Kirkman because I'm sat in my bed. And I have my hot tea. I'm getting up close and personal with this microphone. I shouldn't have been here. I was deeply got to Birmingham today. Do you ever have that instance where you're so fixated on doing something that you start to dream about what, doing it? And then you kind of wake up and realize that it was all just a dream because then you actually thought you were doing it. Like, I was supposed to meet a friend during the afternoon yesterday, and afternoons aren't always my best time, because it's daylight, and it may be December, but we still get sun sometimes, so I didn't want to go out in the sun in the afternoon and it's also very busy and it's coming up to Christmas ain't nobody got time for that but luckily we could reschedule it to the evening and much better in the evening but yes so I was fixated on getting up and off in the afternoon and my dreams were of me catching the bus <laughs> and shame to say I dream quite frequently of catching the bus and then it happened again with obviously I, I knew pretty much at, well I knew pretty much yesterday that I wasn't going but I still had a little hope because I'd booked my train tickets, so I kept hope up until the last hour. Well, I I had this theory that since I had planned to go on a trip today, I should spend today doing all the things that I love in Leeds. So, my dreams were fixated on that. So I dreamt that I was in a, in a shopping mall. We don't call them malls over here. Which is a shame because I love the word. Over here we say mall. Because there's that place in, on Monopoly called Pal Mall. But it's not, it's Mall. And I wonder if, it, if it's Paul Mall. But I never heard anyone call it Paul Mall. And again, I frequently dream about shopping in malls. Well, it's not necessarily shopping, it's more just hanging out and in these malls, there is always a Starbucks where I drink hot chocolate. And so that was what my dream was just before I started recording this. I was chatting to the cute barista and trying to get on the Wi Fi. God, what a mundane dream. Certainly not what I thought I was going to be doing. Anyway, back to yesterday. 
for drinks with the friends. Yes, I know you were all on tenterhooks. Tenterhooks? Where did the phrase tenterhooks come from? Oh, I think I've actually, I know this one. There's this wonderful woman on TV who uh, has had an understated career, to say the least. She is famous for being in Dictionary Corner on Countdown. She is Susie Dent. And I've met Susie Dent, and I've got Susie Dent's autograph in Susie Dent's book. And I'm quite happy and proud of that. She does a little section on Countdown now called The Origin of Words, which I wish had its own show because it's very interesting. Origin. From medieval Latin, tentorium. From tent, meaning stretched. From the verb, tender. Okay. I'm good for you. Still no more. And then the whole idea to search up that word, no, I won't get onto that, what I was going to get onto, is the reason you were on Tender Hooks, because I mentioned going for drinks with someone. That's not like me. I don't have a social life. I don't have people who I actually converse with. As is the case, it's getting to be that way. I have had many drinks with many different friends over the past 14 days, a little less. So last night was the second time I had drinks with my friend, who I shall call flat cap. Now, as is the case with all my social interactions, especially with men, especially with gay men, I can only socialise through grinder. Ugh. I know, it sounds, sounds, I mean, I've talked about this in the carry episode. But it's true, I mean, I'm not the type of person to walk up to somebody in a bar and be confident that, that it happened, actually. I saw a boy wearing a really, really cute top. And I was desperate to just... I was like, why can't I go up to him and say, I really like your top. And he was eating with his boyfriend and... And I was just, just being really awkward. So I didn't, thankfully. But yeah, I don't, even if he had been on his own, I don't think I would have had the confidence to be this weird guy going, I like your top. And that's the beauty of Grindr is that People are, are inviting you to have a conversation, to do more than have a conversation. So the mere fact that all I want to do is have a conversation is makes things easy. That's where I met. Black Cap and I started following each other on Twitter, and he insists on doing Facebook, but I'm terrible at Facebook. I have about 55 friends, only 50 of which are alive. It's a hazard of being friends with people who... Uh, suffer from cancer. It's the morbid truth. Sorry to get real with you for a second there. <clears throat> mm, but yeah, 
I refuse to have Facebook on my phone. I refuse to be at the beck and call of that net network. I wonder where the hell network came from. So before I go into that, I will finish the story of my drinks with the flat. is our second time meeting and in person he's lovely but on paper well in the written form in the tagged form I should say nobody writes me anyway I did give him a Christmas card because that's the kind of person I am I love to write I don't buy cards with these verses written all pre written in them. I write, I like to write. We might get onto that later in the podcast, I don't know, but let's go with the train that's where the train is taking me, which was. I'm so shit at multitasking. I was supposed to be looking up the word, the meaning of a verse. Which I know you're all yelling at me now. Blah, 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 blah. Network. Well, before it was popularized with Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and uh, Instagram, it's just a derivative of Facebook now. The network was a complex system of roads, railroads, or other transportation routes. A group or system of interconnected people or things. So, I guess that kind of holds true. It connects people. But, uh, is it social? I say no. You have to put in the real effort to be social. I can't, I can't say this word. Sociable. Yeah. I always want to say sociable. That's not the word. Sociable. You can't just put yourself on these things like Facebook and have a thousand friends and and say, oh, I have a thousand friends. No, you do not have a thousand friends. You maybe have two friends. And I never see you. I want to be one of your friends. And I should have been. But because you're so fixated on getting more friends, I don't end up being your friend. Yes, I'm obviously talking about somebody in particular. Because I'm being very aggressive. That's my, uh, that's the end of that. Forget, I just did that. Back to flat cap. When he sends messages, they're so passive aggressive. At least that's the way they come off. But this is a problem with social networking. When you write something down, it's just a word. Especially on Twitter, you've only got 140 characters to convey what you're going to say. 
So, you might write something down like, thanks a lot. But somebody might read that as, thanks a lot. And you see the difference? Do you hear the difference, rather? So, this is a problem in the 21st century, is that sometimes things need more context. And you get that context by having face-to-face -face interactions. You can actually see the intent of words. So that's what I meant when I said that flat tap is much better in person because in person he's lovely and you know I, I admitted that I was nervous because we'd had a lot of <laughs> I mean he went as far I know upon doing this if the Flat Cap is listening, and then Flat Cap is going to be made aware of who Flat Cap is. For that, I apologize, but nobody else will know. Flat Cap blocked my number, but that was, and I kind of got the impression they did that, and I don't mind. But again, passive aggressive. Um, obviously, since we had drinks yesterday, it's all fine. It, that, that was just a reflection of where he was at that time. It had nothing to do with me. It was just... Yeah. What am I talking about? I don't know. This isn't going the way that I thought it would. I'm supposed to be talking about my illness, but I'm not interested. Oh my god, yeah! Okay, so I started my new drug. <laughs> the first new drug that I've had in since I was 15. And at current, it is at only 0.4 mils of Eprex, which I inject into under the skin. And depending on what that will do to my blood count, we will find out tomorrow. I may up the dosage. Up to a mil, I think. Oh, yeah. One mil. And I think I explained what this drug does. It promotes the bone marrow to create more red blood cells. Red blood cells are what my body fails to make enough of because the ones that it does make are the faulty red blood cells that cause the photosensitivity. These breaking down of the cells are what causes the skin to react with the light and they're also the reason for the discoloration in my teeth which obviously is not going to be apparent to you if you're listening to the podcast and you've never seen my face yeah. that was all, always a big barrier in well No, actually, that's a lie. There was never the issue that you would have thought it would have been. The most obvious trait of my illness. Is the discoloration of my teeth. But that has never been in the forefront of my re reasons for being 
for lacking confidence when meeting new people. It really hasn't, and, and I know you're thinking that I'm just being, I don't know, magnanimous. But the truth is that it's my lack of social skills that impair my confidence when meeting new people. It has nothing, I don't even think about, oh my god, I have different colored teeth in my mouth, because why would you? They're in my own mouth, I don't have to look at them. Why would I ever think about them? It just doesn't happen. It's like your nose. Your nose is always right there in front of your face, jutting out like a cliff. But you never think about it because you, you don't see it. Your eyes just focus beyond that. The desire to have them changed has never crossed my mind. It never has crossed my mind. It's crossed other people's minds, and other people have asked me, like, why, have, why, why haven't you got dental work? People have cosmetic surgery. Why haven't you? I don't want to go through all that painful procedures being under bright, bright, bright surgical lights. I don't want to go to the dentist and have needles stuck in my gums. However, upon saying that, I am morbidly excited when I get to inject this new drug into my belly. I have to pinch a bit of my belly, and I really have to pinch because there's not much of belly on me. And I have to jab the needle in, and I have to inject the drug. And I'm excited. And I'm, I, that, that hasn't worn off yet. I've done it twice, and I'm still I'm going to be excited if I get to do it on Thursday, it may, I should, it should come down to me again. But I'm on, in hospital on that day. As you will have already known, because this is the reason for every two weeks we come out with a podcast episode. Because every two weeks, for the moment, every two weeks, I have a blood transfusion. However, this drug has a purpose, and the purpose is to prolong the time between transfusions. So it may be we come to a point where I have transfusions every three weeks, and then I haven't even dare to think beyond three weeks. If I can go three weeks without having a blood transfusion, this will be the first time I I do not remember the last time I went three weeks without a blood transfusion. It may have been back when I was 16. It was a long time ago. I think when I came out of intensive care after turning 16, I think that's when the whole every two weeks started. Because that kind of would have made sense because they would have wanted to keep me healthy. And then it just never went back to three weeks because once 
When she goes her week, she can't go back to three weeks because your body would depend on it. So yeah, I have not even considered the possibility of this drug doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah. I don't get my hopes up often. Because that can only lead to disappointment. It's especially apparent when meeting new friends. I desperately contain my hopes of a friendship. Because there have been times when I did hope for a friendship. And those people aren't in my life anymore. And it's too painful. So I just stop hoping for a friendship. So like even with Flat Cat, I don't consider us friends yet. We are just two people meeting for drinks. You know, he's not a friend like Carrie's a friend. Which is so weird because then Carrie's not a friend like Zoe's a friend. <laughs> but, yeah. It takes a while, is what I'm saying. I hope I'm not guarded. I hope I let people in. I don't want to come across as that girl who's on America's Next Top Model right now. She was a lovely girl, but she had a skin condition. And this made her very standoffish. Which I hate that term, but there it is coming out of my mouth. She just wouldn't let her guard down and be of the moment, she always had to have control of the situation. And, well, it got her sent off the competition is what it did. And, you know, life, life is like America's Next Top Model. <laughs> you want to be on top. <laughs> life is like America's Next Top Model. You want to be on top. Oh my god. Where did that come from? So, so in order to do that, you have to be of the moment. You can't try to control the situation. You just have to let it happen. So I hope I'm staying true to that philosophy, that AM, ANTA philosophy. I hope people find me accepting to their, obviously they're offering the olive branch of friendship. Well, as it sounds, we are not friends, we are just acquaintances. I wish we could be friends. I do want to be friends with Flat Cap. I want to be Zoe type friends with Flat Cap. I want to be Zoe type friends with everyone because I, uh, I only have Zoe. This is there's Emily but I haven't hung out with Emily in over a year. So, there is a, a gap, especially for a male friend, and especially for a gay male friend. However, I do have a gay male friend, but he doesn't live in Leeds. 
So that's where the gap is. The gay male friend lives in Birmingham. And hey ho, we've come full circle. End of podcast. <laughs> God, how did that happen? I never got onto the topic that I wanted to talk about. Ugh. I was going to... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get onto what I was going to talk about now. I started writing things down. And this, um, just before I... I got my little set up in, in bed, as I as I told you at the start. There is a notice board in front of me that is supposed to hang on the wall, but it doesn't hang on the wall currently because I was just very lazy around Cassidy McNabb. I, I even got my diaries out. Because I was going to talk about, I was trying to get onto it, like I was talking about social networks, and I was going to talk about um, the annoyance of time hop. It can't just be me, please tell me it's not just me. Do you find time hop so annoying? And it's so disappointing as well to think that the mere act of, of remembering things has come down to an app. Whereas I'm, I'm looking at so the old fashioned way of how we used to do this and by writing in our diaries. Did you never do that? I feel if you haven't done that, you're missing out. Maybe you're just not an eloquent writer. And fair enough, if that's the case. But then type. Keep a typed diary. I still keep a typed diary. I don't keep a written diary, but with the podcast, I thought, I need to start writing down what I do in the two weeks between podcasts. So I've got things, and this is the part where you would, you would be hearing me click my fingers, but I can't click my fingers. So just imagine that I'm clicking my fingers right now. Imagine, imagine what that would sound like. I wanted to, all of these things that would instantly come off the top of my head and that would help me talk. Because I would just say, like, I had drinks with Black Cat. That, that, that was an instance of what I would written down. And now I was going to go into everything else that I would written down. But that's as far as we've got, apparently. Now, I will tell you what I did. We'll go in reverse order, shall we? On Sunday, I just went out for hot chocolate on my own. At... Hotel Chocolat, where is, which is where my mum is right now. <laughs> because I said, all I want for Christmas is chocolate and money. So I've given her a list of the little chocolates that I want from Hotel Chocolat because 2014 was the year that I became obsessed with Hotel Chocolat because we have a bar that has opened and they serve real chocolate, hot chocolate, as opposed to the concoction that Starbucks passes off as hot chocolate, which I know I still, I still drink, but it's not real, it's got artificial preservatives in it, but, but it hasn't got artificial sweeteners in it because I am allergic to artificial sweetness. And having a hot chocolate is like playing Russian roulette. <laughs> and I did that last night. I played Russian roulette last, last night. Me and a flat cap went to a pub. Yes, I went to a pub, blah, blah, blah. I think we've discussed this. Um, it was a pub that 
is beautiful inside and I'd seen it through the windows and I wanted to go inside so I said can we go inside please because he is a beer drinker so um, we needed to go a place where he can drink and a place where I can drink and this was that place this served hot chocolate but it like places do serve hot chocolate but There's types, and sometimes have artificial sweetener, and those are the types that make me bleed <laughs> from the nose. There's a beautiful word for it, which is epistaxis. I might call the episode epistaxis, actually. Yes. Because that is a much more beautiful word. The nosebleed. Oh, I hate the word. I hate hearing the word nosebleed. And I hate saying the word envy. So I just sometimes I just say envy. But epistaxis. What a beautiful word that is. Please. If you take anything from this podcast. Don't let it be... That life is like America's Next Top Model. <laughs> Let it be that we all say epistaxis from now on. But uh, now I think that might be the end of the episode. But wait, there's more. Oh, I was going to talk into the reason that I make these 45 minutes long. And it's for the sheer reason that back when... I used to do my radio shows. I used to record them on a blank side of a tape. And a blank side of a tape was 45 minutes. Barely. If you were lucky if you got 45, 45 minutes. It was usually like 43 minutes. Like they advertised that these blank tapes could hold 90 minutes. 45 minutes on each side. But I went through a lot of blank tapes. Believe me, there is a shoebox full of blank tapes under my bed. And you did not always get 45 minutes. So that is why I like to keep the 45 minutes long. Because that's what I'm familiar with. It feels homely. Is it even worth going through what I went during the week? I started, we got to Sunday, and look how long it took me to describe what happened on Sunday. And all I did was have hot chocolate. I think we might have to end the podcast here. Ah, oh, it's so annoying. But let's just say I went for drinks with another new friend. Um, a new acquaintance, sorry. And if I was the type of person to get my hopes up, I would be getting my hopes up that we would become friends. However, I'm not that type of person. So we are just two gay boys who meet for hot chocolate and talk about Buffy. And that's only happened once right now. And it may never happen again. But if I was that type of person, I hope it does happen. And if it does, then you will find out about it next time. I wish I had more fun tapes. This is the thing. The crux. But what was crux? And then I would go and look up what the word crux means. But no, I definitely do want to find out what that word is. See, this is what happens when I actually think ahead to what I'm going to talk about. The origin of crooks, mid-17th century, denoting a representation of a cross, chiefly in crooks and satyr. Ank. I have an ank. I bought an ank on, is it, sorry, it's an onk from um, the 
Bag Shah Museum, which is an ancient Egyptian museum that I went on a school trip to. And I have such fun memories of that trip. And um, I went around the, the, the other students, this was in like year four when I had absolutely no filter and could say whatever I wanted to, um, I asked them for money um, <laughs> because I wanted to buy this onk. Um, and the, so a crux is literally a cross with a hand. I don't know what that has to do with the crux of the matter. Um, yeah, there we go. If I don't let the podcast progress in a dreamlike fashion, then what I do is overcompensate. I've got all my diaries out, I've got my notice board off the wall if it was hung on the wall, which is, it is not. And I, and I barely, I touched, I touched nothing. I touched upon Monday, yesterday, and Sunday. And then what the hell did I talk about for the rest of the show? The show. The twisted show of Tom's brain. If you want to keep in contact with me, God knows why. I am at LGB Tom. The thing that I was forgetting last episode, remember, I came to this point and I was like, I'm forgetting something. It was my email. But nobody uses email. But just for the sake of it, Tom's Brain 2 at yahoo.co.uk. There is a Facebook so you can like the podcast. And if I remember to do it, you will get notifications blah 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 end of the podcast ah I feel like I wanted to say so much more I started to And then I remembered that this whole podcast has to be about my illness. That's what the anchor is. So then I had to find a a roundabout way to bring up that, which this week was easy enough because I started my new drug treatment since the last time I talked to you. But I fear we might not have anything medical to discuss. <laughs> we shall see. Until next time. I am Thomas Brown. And you've been listening to the Thomas Brown Podcast.